For this video, I'll be walking you through how to put together a simple accordion that works with any HTML markup you want. We will be looking at some techniques to animate containers collapsing, play with some accessibility attributes, and so many more tricks. Show me your support by liking or commenting on this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's jump into it. I have here a simple markup for this accordion and it is a div with class accordion and the reason it works with any markup is that we will rely on the class and not on the markup. So we have these pairs of panel heading and panel content so there should be always one for one here where the panel heading will trigger the panel content to expand or collapse. You can use any markup like a navigation menu with nested UL tags as long as you give them the right classes. On the CSS side, I have a simple style for the body to give you this nice gradient background and center everything. And as usual, I box size border box everything. Now let's start by styling the accordion container and it will be a 500 pixels wide container, wide background with hidden overflow, round the corner by five pixels, some margin and no padding. Seems like I misspelled width. That's why the size does not look right. For the panel heading, I'll remove margin, give it some padding, some heavy gray background, white text, font size, a little bigger, give it some bottom two pixels border, relative position it for some things later on, and give it a cursor pointer since it will be clickable. For the panel content, remove margin and height and hide overflow, and like that, all seem collapsed. The way we will mark expanded ones is with the active class, so when panel heading has the active class. And because the panel content is right after, we can target it with the next sibling combinator. But this is limiting as it forces you to have the content right after the heading and I'll show you how to fix that in a little. Then set height to auto but without padding it does not look so good. But if we set padding the others are no longer collapsed. And this has to do with box sizing we set. For now we'll leave the padding out but I'll come back to this with a better solution later on. Now let's give it a visual indication that these panel headings are clickable with an icon. For that, I'll use the before and after pseudo elements with no content, display the main line so width and height has effect, width of 12 and height of 3, absolute position them, this is why I set position relative on the panel heading, white background slightly rounded corners and position them 15 pixels from the right and 20 pixels from the top. We see them by they are on top of each other and what I want is to show a plus sign for when it is collapsed and a minus as they are now when it's expanded. So for the after, I'll just rotate the after one. So set a rotation of zero initially and give it transition for a better effect. We can actually inspect and toggle the active class to see this in action since we don't have JavaScript yet. Well, this is opposite of what I want if it is showing minus for when collapse and it should be the inverse. So we'll just have to set the degree to 90 for when the normal and zero for when active. With that, let's jump into JavaScript to take care of the magic. I'll start by creating a constructor function which takes an element to start and I'll initialize it with the accordion we have here by querying it. Inside, the first thing I do is use the element to query all the panel headings and content there is. We will need to track the active panel, so a variable for that. And since I rely on the index of this, I'll track the active panel index as well. If you remember the padding situation, we need to take care of that too. So I'll set some vertical padding of 15 to start. We will need two functions, one to activate a panel and another to toggle the panel, and they both take an index. In the toggle panel, I'll use the index to grab the panel from panel heading list. Now for each panel heading, I'll add a click event listener which simply call the toggle panel with the index. Inside the toggle panel, I'll first check if the panel is different than the active panel and use the request animation frame to do any DOM change. We can leave this out and it would work but the browser tends to be lazy when it comes to painting the DOM for any changes and request animation frame makes sure we execute the code that makes the DOM change on next paint which usually happens 60 times a second. I'll leave it out for now so we notice the problem. First thing we do is remove the active class from current active panel, then grab its respective panel content using its index and set height to zero. Same for the padding as well and then we call the activate panel passing the index. Here all I do is use the index to access the panel and change its padding and height. 
for the padding, I'll use the vertical padding we set and set a horizontal padding as well. And for the height, then we need to get its scroll height. So even if the height is zero, the scroll height will tell you the height of its content and we'll add padding times two to that to take in consideration the padding on top and the padding on bottom since they are the same. Now I give this panel the active class and update the active panel with it and the active panel index as well. This one works still because we never set the initial active panel and index. And I'll do that by first removing any active class on the panels. And if the index is zero, I'll use that panel as active panel. This is to make sure the active panel is always the first. Then set the active class on it and call the activate panel function. Now if I click on this, they just expand and collapse accordingly. We'll smooth this change with transition and on padding and height. Because this is a JavaScript heavy, even though there is a way to create an accordion with pure CSS, we don't want the content to be hidden in case the user has JavaScript turned off when visiting the site. So what I will do is make the accordion fully extended as normal. Then in JavaScript, I'll add a reset panel function that simply removes the height and padding, then reuse it. I'll also refactor this class toggle. Now I know JavaScript user can see the content and when JavaScript kicks in, we get our accordion and the code is much nicer and simpler. Now what about the screen readers or people who like to navigate using the keyboard? I'll start by generating ID for panel heading and panel content, which I use the index of the accordion and panel to generate. Then I'll set the ID and some few attributes. The first is the tab index of value zero, which will, which will force tab navigation to stop at panel heading. Then the area controls attribute with panel content ID as well, which simply communicates that the panel heading controls the panel content with that ID. Next, I set area expanded attribute, which communicates whether it is expanded or not. For panel content, I'll set ID as well and set area labeled by attribute with the panel ID as value. Then I set a row of region, which according content normally have. I'll actually move this area expanded to these functions to be updated as well. Now on key down, when the user presses a key on the keyboard, I'll check which key was pressed by checking the code. And if it is the enter or return key, which has the code of 13, I'll call the toggle panel with the index as well. Oops, I misspelled key code here. Now, when I use my keyboard tab key, I can see the tab heading with the blue highlight. And if I press the return key, he expands as expected. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like this video to support me. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you the next one. Bye-bye.